Hello guys, it's the Craven Bookworm, and today I'll be giving you a review for the Netflix series Midnight Mass, directed by Mike Flanagan. To those who are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. This is typically a book review channel or a channel about bookish things. But due to the fact that it's spooky season and due to the fact that I've just recently watched this show and this show turned out to be something that I really, really enjoyed, I wondered why not talk about the series. So here we go. The series is directed by director Mike Flanagan, which some of you may know that directed the movie Hush, um, the Netflix original movie Gerald's Game, which is an adaptation of the Stephen King um, short story or novel by the same name. He also directed The Haunting of Hill House and also one of the better um, Ouija movies, which is Ouija Origin of Evil. So for this review, I will talk about some spoilery things, but I will only talk about the spoilery things from this timestamp up to this timestamp. So that is a bit of a disclaimer for those of you who still want to watch the show to avoid um, that timestamp or just jump straight to the last one. So the story basically follows our protagonist, which is Riley Flynn. He basically grew up on this small island called Crockett Island, a really small, tight-knit community that is really religious. And after growing up, he basically leaves this island to start his own life. Life, like he even starts a business and such but then after one fatal accident he ends up by the way this isn't too much of a spoiler this literally happens within like the first minute or so of the series and you even see it in the trailer as well if you've seen the trailer for the series he ends up in prison but after serving his time he basically gets to get out of prison and he returns to this island finding it in a different state than what he was used to the island is not doing well the people are of course growing older financially they're not very quite stable as well and they're loving months that was on the island was becoming increasingly ill up to a point in which he left the island they sent him away and he mysteriously didn't return back but after Riley returns to the island there's also a new and substitute um, priest that arrives to the island and after these two characters arrive on the island weird things start to happen on Crockett Island both good things and quite sinister things so without further ado let's jump into the pros and cons um, some of the main main major pros that I have with this um, series is that it tackles, it beautifully tackles religion. If you're someone that enjoys religious monologues and dialogues and just contemplative thoughts, this is a series for you. This is a spooky season series just for you. The main theme of the series is Catholicism and how people tend to be swayed or tend to use um, their ideals in order to justify certain means without giving any context to that. And it is demonstrated not just with the scenery, it's the name of the series itself and um, a lot of things taking place in church but it is also um, demonstrated with the music there are actually quite a lot of beautiful gospel music within this series within a horror series so that's definitely that another pro that I have that ties into that is again the monologues I tend to heard that Mike Flanagan and some of his other works as well is really good with monologues and I found that to be true in this case I found that some of the monologues were really well delivered and especially those done by the actor that played for the priest, Father Paul. I thought that the actor, um, Hamish, um, I forgot his name, but I will write it down here. Um, the actor did a really good job and he delivered all of his lines with conviction. And, and while you're looking at the series, it makes sense why a lot of people would attend to mass. Like if you had the priest like that in real life, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would attend to mass as well. He's very charismatic. He understands the people. And even Riley, who isn't as much of a religious person anymore, even he is still able to connect with this priest in one way or another just because of this priest's attitude and persona. But lo and behold, church and masses aren't the only things that happen in this series. There are, of course, horror things happening and a bit of an element of the supernatural as well, which I won't get into until the spoilery section. Now onto the cons, just one of the main cons which I have with the series is that the series is indeed a slow burn. The series does feel like it drags at times and I don't have a problem with that per se, but it is something to keep in mind if you intend on watching the series because I know that that can be a problem for some people because a lot of horror nowadays in cinema and in TV shows are really fast paced, like you immediately get what's happening, it's very snappy happy who have fake jump scares and such but in this one it really tracks and it is more or less like a horror that was from like the i would say a horror that was from like the 50s but not with a terrible cinematography 
it's just that it takes its time into building up to the horror elements of the show. It makes you become attached to the community, like not just the characters, but the whole community before it starts striking you with the very terrifying things that go lurking in the night. So with that being said, let's get into the spoilery section of this review. And if you want to just hear my overall final consensus, just jump to the final portion of this review, which I just give an overall like rating for the series. So now on for the spoilery section of the show, I found um the whole twist with um Father Paul. I thought of it, but I didn't immediately call it to be vampires. I did at some point think um during the second episode that hey, what if this Father Paul character was um indeed Monsignor Pruitt that went vanishing when going on his way to Damascus. I wanted this because Father Paul seemed to have a lot of inside knowledge of things that I think Monsignor Pruitt would know. Like when he's talking with Riley or with some of the other characters, he seems to talk about things that Monsignor Pruitt told him that that doesn't add up because Monsieur Pruitt's mental state wasn't 100%. So how would he be able to recall all of these very detailed things? And that kind of made you wonder, hmm, what if he is Monsieur Pruitt? It turned out to be the case. And I really like the reveal in episode three, in which basically he is in this confession room and he's kind of telling what happened to Monsieur Pruitt after he left Crockett Island and went to Jerusalem. And how basically after the storm, he went hiding and he found this angel of the Lord, which basically it turned out to be a vampire and how that basically made him convinced that he needs to bring this thing back to the island in order to show everyone the message and prophecy of the Lord. It ties right into what I said in my non-spoilery section and that is that people using religion as a justification for their actions even if their actions are on the surface just flat out immoral and there's another character that plays with this um, line really really well and that is the character of Beth that is the holier than thou um, character of the series and she really really does that character well the actress does a good job in making you want to hate the character and that is a good plus for any actor or actress like when an actor or actress plays a character that well that you end up liking them or really not liking them like with for example with Joffrey from Game of Thrones we all hate that little kid but it's just props to that actor so the character of Beth even though everything's going down and especially even after the massacre in episode 6 where people were turning into vampire and massacred everyone in the church she was still really convinced that she was doing the right thing even though Father Paul or Monsieur Pruitt himself saw the error in his ways in the final episode and decided that he was done with this whole thing that it was monstrous Beth stuck to her thing up till the end and this just it's what makes that character type really terrifying not only because of what she does in the series like she handles the poison that basically kills everyone within the church when they turn to vampires she even killed the dog because she was not liking the dog um it's just what makes her really scary is that people like that actually exist of course the series kind of exaggerates things but sometimes even to up to that exaggeration, you can have people that are quite fanatic. And it can be within any ideals. Like in this series, it's with people that are um, Catholic, but it can be people of literally any other um, religion or any other ideals. Like you can find any example within the real world of people that are either secular or religious that have done horrible things in the name of their ideals. Before finishing the spoilery section of this review, I also noticed, and I'm curious if this was part of Mike Flanagan's like inspiration, but the monologues which Riley had um, in this really interesting conversation with Riley and Aaron about death, the meaning of death and what happens afterwards, Riley had this speech that was very Carl sagan -y. like it was very much like something you would hear Carl Sagan say in Cosmos like that we come from star stuff etc etc and Aaron has this monologue as well in her mind um, as she is dying in the final episode and I was wondering if that is something that Mike Flanagan perhaps had um, planned out in the beginning like I'm curious to see if that's the case and if you've watched the series and if you have an answer to this please leave it down in the comment section below because I just thought it very strikingly resembled a speech that was given by Carl Sagan. So all in all, if I were to give a rating for Midnight Mass, I would give it a 5 out of 5 if I were to review it like I typically review books. And that is because simply this 
series did everything for me. This series ticked all of the boxes for me. Like it had really interesting philosophical discussions and dialogues and even monologues. Um, this series had a very interesting supernatural element to it. And uh, the horror for me doesn't need per se need to have the supernatural element, but the way this series handled its supernatural element, I quite thoroughly enjoyed it. Also had very interesting character developments, which again, for me was a big plus. One thing that I will say as a final disclaimer though is if you have issues talking about things that are regarding um, pregnancies and how that might go wrong and also about um, animal cruelty then do be weary of when you're watching this show because there are some of those in here and that you might not want to mess with if you're mentally not ready for that. But all in all this is a really good spooky watch um, if you still want to watch something for Halloween or just anytime throughout the year. Um, directed by Mike Flanagan and if you enjoy his previous work I think you will enjoy this one and just even if you haven't watched some of his older works I think you will still come to appreciate this one and the performances done by some of the really awesome and talented actors and actresses. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I hope to see you guys quite soon and bye!